Welcome back to the Scenario Builder video series. In this video, we'll explore the different usages of variables in Scenario Builder. Let's start by looking at predefined variables. Predefined variables follow specific formats such as dates, times, or random numbers. In our first example, our scenario adds an event to an online calendar. With the set of variable action, it uses one of the predefined date formats available in Scenario Builder. This date variable normally returns the current date. However, in our example, the value has been modified by adding a plus one to the D or day value. This will cause our variable to return tomorrow's date. To call this variable, the type text action is used. By right-clicking in the text field, the user sees a list of available variables for the action. We can see that date has already been selected. The scenario goes on to save the entry, then clicks the Agenda button to display the calendar events. Let's play it back and see how it works. So let's close our execution report and minimize Scenario Builder. And we can see the calendar indicates today's date, October 11th, and shows that our scenario has added an event for tomorrow, October 12th. Next, let's see how Scenario Builder can increment a variable. We'll open a different example and switch to the tree view so we can see the steps in full detail. In this example, first, notice that our date variable has been changed. Instead of adding the fixed value of 1 to the day, which will always return tomorrow's date, it now adds a variable number of days. The variable, as designated by a text string framed with percentage signs, has been established in a previous step. Here, with the set of variable action, the add days variable was defined and given an initial value of 15. The variable is called with a type text action as before, but let's look down here at an action called increment a variable. This action tells Scenario Builder to increase the add days variable by 14. Lastly, notice the scenario uses a loop to repeat a series of steps three times. Each pass through the loop adds an event to the calendar 14 days ahead of the last. We'll play it back and watch what happens. Okay, so the first staff meeting appointment is set for October 26, the date determined by the initial add days value of 15, a date 15 days from today. Notice the next pass through the loop produces a staff meeting event on November 9th, a date resulting from the increment of variable value of 14. And the last entry again as a result of the increment of variable action is set for November 23rd, 14 days ahead of the previous appointment. We're going to add one more appointment to our calendar, this time using a value from a CSV file. A CSV, or Comma Separated Values file, is a simple format in which numbers and text are stored in plain text form that can be easily written in a text editor, such as Notepad. To create a CSV variable file for Scenario Builder, use the first row for variable names followed by rows of values. Be sure to separate all values by commas. For our calendar example, we'll use a simple file containing only one variable called date and three values.
All right, so let's open another scenario. Now, the first thing to notice is that there's a file attached to the scenario. If we click the Browse icon in the Variable File Name Property field, we see a listing of all the available CSV files for this project, including the date file, which has been selected. Notice again that a type text action is used to call the date variable. This time, though, instead of pulling a predefined variable that's been set up within our scenario, we're pulling from a list of variables held outside of the scenario in a CSV file. Note also that access to these values defaults to sequential, in other words, starting with the first row and proceeding row by row to the last. Random access can also be selected. As we play back the scenario, we see the new calendar event is set for December 21st, which is the first date listed in our CSV file. Before we conclude, let's take a look at execution status variables. Execution status variables allow you to direct your scenario down alternate paths depending on the success or failure of an image or window action. This scenario searches for the Google logo and performs one of two ways depending on whether the logo is present or not. To accomplish this, we first assign an execution status variable to the find image action that searches for the Google logo. This one is named image found. Next, we use an if then conditional statement to set up the two branches of behavior one in the event the logo is found, and one in the event it's not. Let's play the scenario. Well, we hope you've gained a working knowledge of the variables in Scenario Builder. For more information and examples, please check out the Scenario Builder User's Guide, available at nrgglobal.com. Thanks for joining us today.